Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor, and I'm here to talk about uh, Python and specifically with GraphQL. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, to start, I'm not the creator of, I am not have any involvement with Facebook on the creation of GraphQL, and uh, I'm not either the creator or developer of the Graphene, that it's one of the libraries that I'm going to show how to use with to implement GraphQL in Python Django. I'm just a user. Um, and what is GraphQL? Um, does anyone in here use GraphQL today? Mm, no, right? Yeah. So GraphQL is a new query language created by Facebook and uh, open sourced like recent, I believe that it was created in 2012 and open sourced like last year. Um, some call it's a framework as well. I think that it's more a language and specification. Facebook released as well few frameworks and few helper libraries to allow people to use, to help people uh, using GraphQL. But it's more a language to kind of take place of what today we, uh, we call REST framework, uh, REST APIs, and bring peace between backend developers and uh, client developers. Um, why GraphQL? Uh, we all are used to REST frameworks, and uh, we are happy today with uh, AJAX calls and uh, transparent JSON after years of uh, XML and SOAP web services. Uh, but it's still, it's not perfect. Um, as the time passed by, we see ourselves versioning our APIs with API v1, API v2, API v whatever you call it, and uh, it's become hard to maintain. And uh, this is not a problem of Django, this is not a problem of Django REST framework, this is just the way that REST it's laid off. Uh, those, th there's no really um, a way to fix this but changing REST and uh, creating a new query language specific for web. The other problem that we see is that we start exposing a model and uh, in the simplistic way in the academia, we can, it looks like pretty simple. You have a user model, you create a user serializer and uh, you do a get in the users, you receive a list of user, you do a post, you create, you do a get users slash ID, you receive an object. That's pretty beautiful, looks beautiful in the tutorial, but in the real world, you need two serializers. There is the user serializer and another serializer with less detail that you send to your API listing. And then there's the startup way that they need few extra ways, because the, your iOS developer may require um, three different ways of seeing your users, and uh, after a few months, you have a same model with 10 different ways of uh, rendering it. And uh, it's clearly for anyone that's working in the back inside that this is not great, and this is not the right way, but this is what we see a lot when we are working specifically with startups that try to reinvent themselves, prototype their product so quickly. And uh, on applications that are already on Apple Store and Google Play, and you cannot afford to simply kill your old model or kill the old way that you are rendering your model for your clients because you have no control over when your client is going or if he will ever update the client. So you end up having to keep all this versioning of APIs and all these uh, different ways of rendering the same model. This become a mess with time. So, but yeah, we all love Django REST framework. It has been, I believe, the standard for Django for a, quite a while. Uh, a few years back, I still play around a little bit with uh, TastePy, another library to create in REST for API, uh, API, APIs. But I feel that as of today, uh, I'm not the only one. I think that almost 100% of the Django projects has a Django REST framework on them. And uh, it's amazing. Like over 6,000 uh, 
stars on GitHub, 2,000 forks, uh, not even count how many uh, Stack Overflows and Google account, uh, instance you can find. So yeah, Jingle REST framework is amazing, but it's not the problem of the framework, it's the problem of RESTful APIs. Um, it does not matter how great is your, your API, but when you have your iOS developer with a different need of your Android developer and your web client and uh, one unique backend trying to uh, adapt to all of these three, your REST API may end up not being as RESTful as you plan at first. So anyway, thank you to Tom Christie for the great work with Jing REST framework, but we need something else. And this is GraphQL. Uh, the way to get started with GraphQL, I would say, is, yeah, dig a little bit in the documentation. It's a completely different sort of a species. So you won't be using just AJAX call. You have to get used to what are the types available for GraphQL. Um, what is, basically, I think that the main stuff to getting started, someone needs to understand the types available uh, what is a node, what is a query, and a little, and a little bit of what is relay at least to understand the terminology. It's almost like if you were getting a start with REST for API, you need to know what is a get, what is a post, um, what is an endpoint. Uh, those basic things, uh, when you move to GraphQL, you need to know what is a node, what is a query. Um, as the name says, it's kind of exposing your models as a graph, uh, the data structure graph, so instead of rows or instead of uh, uh, JSON objects, you're going to have a node that will be almost um, as an instance of your object. And uh, the query being the main endpoint. And uh, the difference, one of the main difference, like just to start, is that you have just one endpoint. It's one root endpoint that is your query. And from there, you can choose uh, what to query. It's almost like bringing the power of SQL to the web, allowing the user not just to get the information as was specified by the backend, but choosing what he wants, choosing the fields that I want, choosing the relationships and filters that I wanna use. Um, another great way to get started, and uh, if you are Star Wars fans, uh, you may get hooked into a little bit. There is the GraphQL Star Wars API. Uh, the GitHub project, it's, op it's available, so you can see the entire source code. And if you just wanna play around with the, the project deployed, there is this link that has the project deployed and you can check it out and play a little bit with that. And um, after you understand a little bit of the query language itself, um, the second part that is a little bit I feel that it's not as important as at this moment because most of the times we, most of the problems that we have with REST is during the process of querying, not in the posting itself. Our post request usually has less changes than our queries, and, uh, but, it's imp but it's somewhat important as well. Is the, in GraphQL, we call the post uh, mutations. So if you wanna know as well, how implement how to change data, how to create data through the GraphQL, you may need to learn how to implement the mutations in your GraphQL API. So you look into that, you loved it. You sign me in, how can I start now doing with Python? Because when you go to the GraphQL documentation, you find that there is a framework for Node.js, there is a framework for, uh, I believe that Ruby and, um, everything else that you may imagine, but there's no links for Python on the official documentation created by Facebook. Well, there is a project called Graphene um, that implements GraphQL in Python, and uh, it has as well a wrapper for Django. And uh, it's as simple as a pip install, Graphene Django, and uh, graf graphic, graphical, Django uh, graphical, this is not mandatory, the second line. It's just a way to have the web view, the React web view that allow you to play around with your graph API. And um, 
After that, you create your app and your models. This, uh, sorry, this is uh, following as if we are doing a Django project. So you install Graphene, you install Graphical, and uh, you create your mo uh, app, your models, as you would in any Django project, uh, put everything in the installed apps, and then let's start with uh, doing the GraphQL. Uh, the first part of uh, a project with GraphQL is creating your node. Uh, it has the no Django node class that allows you to explain the type of objects that your GraphQL will have. And uh, if you take a quick look into this, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, model view sets or uh, Django REST framework serializers where you specify what model is it this node is, uh, is going to inherit of and some extra parameters as filters and um, order by and what else you may imagine. There are plenty of options. Those are the most basic ones. And uh, this basically tells your GraphQL how to represent a user. Um, after that, you have to create the, the root for your, for your GraphQL. And the root, it's almost as if um, compared with the URLs, sort of. So the idea is that each app will have its own query and uh, you have a main it's, let's, in, with Django, each app has its own URL, and uh, the project has the main URLs that import all the URLs and includes them uh, in the path for the project. The same will be applied with GraphQL, the, the, the standard way of doing. You create one route that will be one schema for each app, and this schema will expose the, the nodes of that specific app. So let's suppose in this case we have a user's app with a user model. So we create a user node first, and then we create this schema that will expose that user mode. A uh, node, sorry. Um, you see that it has a class meta abstract true, is because we we don't really want to use this this class query yet. It's an abstract that will be imported by the global query that would be almost as the global urls.py that you include the urls from your app later. So where we go after this. Now we create our global uh, query. This, um, in the official documentation, I, th I believe that they lay out this, uh, this file um, aside the manage.py in the root of your project. I believe that it's, for my point of view, I'd rather put inside your project app folder. Uh, let's suppose when you create a Django project, it's by default create the project, and uh, within the project there is a folder with the name, the same name of the project that has your settings and uh, your, the, the main URLs and everything. I'd rather put in there than in the roots together with manage.py. Uh, I know that some people that use cookie cutter and uh, or some people rename that that folder as well to config most of the time that will have your main settings of Django. I had her put it in there, in that folder, in this config folder. And uh, on this schema, you are going to import your app schema, let's suppose users.schema, and uh, then ex uh, expose your model to the to GraphQL. Doing so, you just need to plug in your URLs because uh, you have a schema, you have the queries, but Django still does not know how to route the, those GraphQL. And uh, the way for doing so is by plugging the schema created to the Django URLs. The other thing that it's not mandatory, but for anyone that are planning on, start playing around with GraphQL, it's extremely recommended, is to add that graphical, that is the second line in the, 
in this URL pattern that I created. The, and this will include that React web view for you to play with uh, the GraphQL. It's really a, a web console that you can type your query in one side and get the result in the other side to get it started and playing around. On a production, it's not necessary. It's just for playground, but I think that it's it's the best way to really get started and to learn some how to do some queries and stuff. You may want to protect this somewhat uh, if you are if you put this exposed to in a real server. You can just add some permissions to just add means or some specific cloud group to be able to access that. And uh, after that, you're done. You have your GraphQL exposed and. Uh, you can access the graphical and you have an interface like this that will allow you to query the your GraphQL through the web. This is not how your clients are going to use, but this is the first way to get started with uh, GraphQL to really write in the queries and playing with that. The clients itself, your iOS developer, your React developer, or whatever client you may have, they will call straight this first line that is the GraphQL endpoint and pass in the, the query that they need. Again, and uh, why not? Uh, what are the problems? Looks like too perfect to be true. And uh, it's in early stage. I think that for some of us, it may look amazing. Uh, we got, we like to see new things. We like new technologies. We like to play with new things, but it has the downsides. It's a technology that you may expect to change a lot, and uh, the adoption is not as high as a RESTful or Django REST framework. Uh, will your team use? That's one big problem. Uh, it's not just we, uh, if you implement this on your Django backend, it may work perfect, but if your client is not willing to implement the, on the iOS application, if he, your client is not willing to implement the web application, it's just pointless. Uh, you need to think, you need to know that your client is really willing to do that. Um, for example, on my case, I, work, I have a full-time job and um, we, there's no way that we can use that in there, like in my company. Uh, and in the other two freelance projects that I work, one of them, the iOS developer, is a little inclined of using it. But still, it's just inclined. No one is really using much. So I still do not have any project on, that I'm on production with this, because it does not matter if I have an endpoint ready. No, no client is, not that the client's iOS can works very well with GraphQL, but if your iOS developer is not developing with, I, with GraphQL, I'm sorry, you have to try to sell him the idea and uh, it's not at, at ease sometime. And uh, I think that the major problem is help. As I mentioned before, you see the amount of uh, Stack Overflow questions and the number of tutorials that we have about Django REST framework, and uh, almost every single problem that you may imagine you will face when implementing an API with Django REST framework, you can find someone that had the similar problem or close by, and you can kind of relate with that, and it's easy to find the help. When you are doing GraphQL, you are on your own, so you are going to spend a lot of time, sometimes uh, a lot of hours, just to sometimes fixing small mistakes that you did and just no one else did before you or no one shared that with you yet. Um, this is a big problem sometimes. Um, I believe that that's it. This is the way to get started. And uh, I just have to mention that Cyrus Akibari, I don't, I don't know exactly his name, he was the creator of the Graphene that is the wrapper for Python and uh, GraphQL. And I believe that he will be at Django conference in Philly this week giving a talk. 
So if someone is interested, uh, I definitely recommend. It's a great library. And uh, on this sample that I showed, it's, most, it's just using the Django part, but it's not a Django library. It's a Python library. You can use it with Flask. You can use it with pure Python and SQL Alchemy. Uh, the advantage of using with Django, at least for me as a Django developer, is the fact that it can inherit in my, my existing models. And uh, so my work, it's kind of close to the same work that I would have when I'm doing a REST API of creating my model view sets or, or model serializers and specifying some extra parameters. But I don't really need to create the entire model again. Uh, that's, I think that, that's it for, for now. If anyone has questions? Of a query, I do not have, let me see if I have any. Oh no, it's not this one. Eighty. Yes, that's a great thing. Yeah, the, the Star Wars API, I believe that's the best sample. And, uh, oh wait, I don't have Wi-Fi. What I recommend like, to get started with the language, if you want, usually when, you, if you wanna see samples of queries itself, um, when you open the Star Wars project, there is the test files that, Oh, for and uh, the test files have plenty of query samples, of course, to test, and it's an easy way to get started. But the format itself, it's something, okay, here we are. Let me get an error. Okay, I need to get uh, actors. And then uh, this interface that we are using is the graphical. It's the one that I said that Django REST framework implements as well. And it has these helpers that will uh, kind of autocomplete your, your comments and uh, allow you to, to play around with your, with your queries. much? Yes. And uh, in here, we can get, uh, in this case, I'm using the all films. And um, as you can see, we can specify the fields that we want. So we solve that first problem of the REST API that each client requests you to have a different fields. Uh, your iOS developers say that he cannot receive the members and your Android developers say that he would love to have the profile picture and uh, each one can ask for the fields that they want. Kind of the same way that whoever is used to SQL, you, we were used to specify what we want. We would not just get whatever the API give us. 
and uh, let me see I title year no there's no year uh, in here you can uh, let me see what's the relationships that this have actors character One minute. Okay, any any other question? Anyone? So and um, yeah. So thank you all. Um I hope you guys enjoy and use GraphQL.